Oh, my first night out. This is in Austria, just crossed the border yesterday. How like, I don't know, half past nine in the evening. And I walked until one o'clock in the night after being in prison in Switzerland. I felt such an urge to just walk, walk, walk. What are those mountains there? Mm. Probably Switzerland. Well, Switzerland is a dictatorship. I mean, they dictate, you can see it all, they dictate what you can think, what you can say, how you're going to express yourself. They dictate it all. That's where the word dictatorship is from. They put you in prison if they don't agree, you know, if you don't just copy what the Swiss tell you to say. They dictate what you want, what you can say and what you can't say. That's Switzerland. So apparently this is the, uh, the border where the stones start here. And I came from there, from Austria here. And I just wanted to find a place to sleep. I didn't even know I got to Switzerland. So I slept there, back to Switzerland. Damn. So this guy here told me this all the way here. And he, he saw some border patrol as well. But I mean, who would say this is a border? <laughs> oh. So I came from here in the middle of the night, and this is Switzerland. Well, who would, excuse my French, who would know that? And stupid me being glad being in Germany and spending the night back in Switzerland. Can you imagine? If I would have known, I wouldn't have shot an eye in the night. Mistletoe. So that's Austria where well, I was walking that way last night. From there, from. And I crossed here. And I thought I'm in Austria, didn't see anything. Across there, here we see the path. I slept in bloody Switzerland again on the other side of the dip here. Imagine. There's some Austrian folk music. Probably have a lot of brawls every night. Like in the, in the Hitler beer keller. Oh, let's go on marching. Hello, is that Austria? Who do you think that live, is living here? Two pyramids, two step pyramids, and the world domination. It's so obvious. So I'm hitchhiking here. Somebody takes me. So here are some other two hitchhikers. They've got a top. Fascinating thing here. In the middle of November. And I was sleeping here. The petrol station is there. We didn't make it any further last night. We're just a bash over it. Here in Austria, there's my petrol station there. And I spent two days waiting at the other petrol stations as before. And it's really hot here, it's like the, the phone, they call it the warm wind from the Mediterranean, in spite of the fact that it's full of snow here. So I've been camp trailing the whole day here in this little village where I'm here in Austria. And look what it does, you know, before it was just all blue sky and then the clouds come. That was the church like before, they're all camp trails. 
let's have a look there. Is that a castle or what is that? In Schwarz in Austria. <laughs> Catholic nuns, why not really? <laughs> Is that a bodybuilder or what? <laughs> Interesting. Look at this. At the mayor's office. Fair Rathaus. The square and compass. There too. The hexagon. Hello, Isis. There uh, again. From 1931, mm, double X. This is probably Freemason Lodge and a lot of chemtrails here. It was beautiful weather before and chemtrails and it all gets cloudy. And even the name reminds us of Switzerland, which they call Schwitz. You know, these are, well, these are ethnic Swiss here. This is probably still for Albec, you know, or near it. The only difference is an A for an I. Like Switzerland, Switzerland, you know. It's all the same here. And actually every time, you know, they arrest me like, you know, putting guns on my head, you know. It's so tiring, you know, it cost me all my energy, you know. And they feel so great, you know. The, the cop probably thought these, you know, putting three guns on my head. They probably thought like, wow, you know, I felt like Bruce Willis for a while, you know. It gave me so much energy. And I was exhausted afterwards, you know, and the time after. It's like, you know, and especially if you have to count with it, they can do it any moment again, you know, for the last four years. But of course, Switzerland never did anything wrong, you know. They're so clean and innocent, they never did anything. You know, there's no Nazi gold, nothing. So this is in Austria, not very far from the Swiss border. Well, it says Switzerland here, Schwitz. And they even have the same number plates, you know, like Schwitz, S, Z. As in Switzerland, as for the canton of uh, Schwitz. Well, it's all the same, you know. Switzerland is a lot bigger than we think. So this is the, uh, the sign, you know, like a sticker you need to have to go on the, on the motorway in Austria. You see, this is the aristocracy. You know, this is the symbol of the of, of pharaoh, of the, of the nobility. It was, it's just like in the old days, you know, like you have to pay toll if you want a couple of nights standing there, and you say, well, you have to pay toll if you want to pass here. Nothing really changed, you know. So this is me hitchhiking here. Yeah? Uh, it's like 20, 100 hours in the evening or something. Yeah. You know, the uh, Prime Noctis, you know, that's, it's, they had the genetics uh, like injected like into the people, like, you know, with the first right or the uh, Le Droit du Seigneur. And then they kept an eye on all those, you know, descendants who were like half pharaonic, but not like initiated so they could like have a job you know for the police and you know protect and security or some other office and this is how they did it and all the other people who didn't have any uh, pharaonic genetics they uh, just died in the um, in the horus matrix you know to get rid of them you see that crown 
Well, that's three because of Isis, Horus, and Seth on that eagle or reptilian or whatever it is. So, you understand? So, all those people who were not pharaonic, who didn't have anything pharaonic at all, they just died in the Horus matrix, like on Omaha Beach, the 666. You see, they're human hands, workers' hands, you know, and we are in chains. You see, they are too, workers' hands. And that's them on top. It's them with the crown. So we have to work for them. See? And we are in chains. That's the whole idea. There's probably a lot more to see as well. And another night in Austria. I have to take the small road, you know, because to, I, I want to go to Poland. I want to go to Auschwitz. That's my my aim. And I don't want to go over Germany, over the motorway. So I have to go through the mountains here in Austria. It takes a lot of time, but it's fun. Met some real nice people. I met the Croatian guy. He gave me 20 euros. He gave me a real nice Big Mac and all things like that. Well, I couldn't eat that every day, but sometimes it's okay, yeah. I would never go there with my children, you know. And, uh, you know, the uh, German police, especially in Bavaria, they're very bad, you know. They're always picking on hitchhikers. You have to take all your gear out. So I just want to avoid it. Uh, I don't know, 15 years ago, I had a couple of brawls there, you know. So, um, and they're always right, you know. It's like... Bavaria is like, you know, very much like Switzerland. They provoke you, you know, and you finish the fight and they are always right. Yeah. So my aim of this, uh, my destiny here, my aim is to, uh, I want to spend the night in Auschwitz inside. Uh, not to disrespect it or anything, I, uh, on the contrary, and I, I, I made a big sign, it says Auschwitz made in Switzerland. I'm going to put it up, I'm going to show all those people. And this is, you know, this, it was so typical Swiss. I, I've proven to you that all the top responsibles were Swiss and the way they hid it, you know. And they gave all those poor people uh, hope until the very end, until they had to take the shower, you know, they hid it until the end there, which is so typical Swiss, you know, that's the way they do it. They even hid it from the Germans. I've got a bloody hole in my underwear. <laughs> So I had to get myself another one. Got it for free somehow. <laughs> oh dear, time to go. So the Austrian guy who let me out last night, he let me out here and he said it's nice and quiet. And indeed, it looks perfect. Look at the lawn. But it looks, it is too perfect. You know, somebody might come here, have a rendezvous, you know, and meet up in the night. You got the... The car light shining on your tent suddenly, or queers getting here, you know. So, just a few hundred meters further down here, there's a meadow. So, that's where I planted my tent. Just out of sight, you know. Oh, so I was sleeping next to the cops here. No, I was sleeping there, just there. Yeah. Here they don't seem to bother, you know. In Switzerland they would be all crawling over me. Bastards. So I got this from Sasha, the Croatian guy. He bought me two triple burgers, a Big Mac and a Coke and, and chips. And uh, of course it's a good story, you know. I, 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 I told him, well I'm on the show. He's, he asked me, well why didn't you work? Why don't you work? I said, well I don't have a work permit. And I said, well, I can't go back to my wife and children because of my YouTube videos. And uh, they sent me an anti and they, I said, they sent me an anti-terrorist squad because of that. And I mean, I'm not lying. I'm telling the truth. I'm not a person that likes lying. You know, I, I, I don't. You know. 
So, um, yeah, so that makes a good story. Immediately, in the beginning, he was, you know, like blocking off, and then he's, he's like, come on. When he heard that about the anti terrorist squad, he said, come on, we're going to eat, you know. And uh, he gave me 20 euros in this here. So, I mean, a gypsy would be proud of this story, eh? But uh, it's not a lie. I, I, I wouldn't lie, you know. I don't like lying. A hotel is called Licht, light, like an Illuminati. And here's two times the uh, the temple is V. I don't know what it is. I got that symbol. So I'm here in Kitzbühel, the famous Kitzbühel in all. A unicorn in Kitzbühel. So a lot of money here, a lot of nobility. I suppose the royal family coming in all that. That's the other side, there's nothing really, just lots of money. That's interesting, I was just sitting here on the graveyard in, uh, in Kitzbühel, the famous Kitzbühel, a horrible place. And then I saw this here, all this Tibetan sort of stuff here. And then it says here, the guy, he was a Tibetan... Well, he went there, you know, to uh, probably with the Nazis, with the Annenerbe, you know. So when he was like in his 30s, you know, that one that was in the 1930s or 1940s, probably with Otto Rahn or the other the other bloke who was in the SS, like. So I'll have a look when I come back. Peter Aufschneider, Forscher, That means. Uh, he was investigating in Tibet. Oh, it's not really the word, I'm sorry. <laughs> it slips my mind. Okay, I'm here in horrible Kitzbühel. Hello, Isis. Pharaonic hands. The M symbol. Mm -hmm. Like the M hand. So this is in Kids Boo. It's horrible here. Car. It says car, which is the soul when you're alive, you know. Uh, this is pharaonic, reptilian, cold, money only. I don't want to stay here a minute longer. It says the black e eagle, the black nobility. You can see the Templars V on top of it. So they make a distinction between normal eagles and black eagles. Three times, Isis, Horus and Set. Nobility all over here. Basic Apache. I like all this royal stuff here. Money, money, money. Basic approaches. It's a bakery. <laughs> a royal bakery. The sun hieroglyph of the pharaohs. Smells like Nazi Germany here, you know, but they're not as sly as the Swiss, I tell you. Triangle of the Freemasons. Sun hieroglyph in another way. All this eagle stuff all over. Fuck off. There's so 
some Euroglyph. It's all over, you know. Why don't you piss off? Go on. Austrian Nazis. Mauthausen. They're very similar to the Swiss, but not as refined, you know. Probably a soccer match. Some people died here. It looks like the whole family, three persons, the baby and everything. What is it? No, it's not. Uh, probably a car accident opposite the castle. There's a nice road going into the castle. Let's have a look. And another night outside. There somewhere is the castle of em Empress Sisi. <laughs> if you turn that around, you get ISIS. Uh, this is my aim. I want to hang this up in Auschwitz. That's why I'm going. The Swiss are going to love this. Put some stickers on it, you know, because it's a sensitive place. So, you know. Uh, so they know I, I really hated what they did there. Yeah. Well. So that's my aim. I'm here in Bad Ischl. So it was my first night in Poland here. I'm not very far from Auschwitz. Uh, I drove with the German guy all the way. We only... I hardly saw any of Czechoslovakia or what is it, Czech Republic. And... Uh, Yeah. except for a supermarket so there was a good ride and in the supermarket they sell beer in one and a half litre plastic bottles and apparently the Czechs they are the biggest beer drinkers in the world well, I can see that <clears throat> so the German guy bought that for me and some bread and some he invited me to, for a bite in Kentucky Fried Chicken. That was Georg. So, had a very good ride all the way from uh, Vienna, before Vienna, all the way to Poland. Came here in the middle of the night, went to sleep at two in the morning. So on the map it said, um, it's just opposite the gates of Auschwitz, just 50 meters on the other side of the road. And they call it a house of dialogue. It's a uh, Catholic monastery or something. Franciscan, I think. But if you get in here, you know, they say it's a hotel. And uh, we are quite busy, they say, you know. So I suppose it's like Catholic, you know, hypocrisy, you know, no dialogue at all. It's all about hypocrisy and just big money, you know. So, don't know what I'm doing here. The house of dialogue can make me laugh. Well, it's quite sad, actually. <laughs> what a misery. <laughs> what a misery. The house of dialogue. Shit, oh. It's another way to attract tourists, eh? So here at the House of Dialogue, they've got a nice garden here. If, apparently it's a, camp, a campsite as well. So I said, I asked them, you know, can I put my tent here then? So well, you have to pay. You know, so I have no money. Well, no money, but no sleep, you know? So that's the human compassion of the Catholic Church, really. Uh, there isn't any. Uh, bloody hypocrites. And I really wonder, anyway, what's, what's the Catholic Church doing here next to Auschwitz, you know? This big house here. You know, I suppose basically they're just here because there's, uh, because there's energy, you know? 
the energy of human misery. And they still haven't learned what compassion, what human compassion is, you know. Couldn't even sleep in their nice lawn. No. Bloody reptilians. Just living off the energy of human misery. Uh, just making a party out of Auschwitz. <laughs> really. That's what it is, basically. Just a social gathering, you know? As if the Pope ever did, you know, did anything, you know. He didn't move a finger. Put the people in here, you know. Just, just on the other side, Austria is just on the other side of the road. <coughs> well, it's my first night in Auschwitz. There's a sort of a monastery. Well, they don't expect God to protect them. They do it themselves, you know. Uh, a Carmelite monastery and behind it is the no dialogue house and then it's Auschwitz it's just 200 meters down the block it's getting colder so there's that no dialogue Catholic house here it's huge it's an institution huh? There's the monastery, and I slept just behind there, where the trees are. And this is Auschwitz. Now, what are they doing? I mean, the Catholic Church, they organize, together with the Swiss, the Red Line, with the Templars. So, what, I mean, what are they doing here? What kind of... Oh, I don't want to spill any more words over it. Here it says, Dialogu. I mean, dialogue. You know, it says on the map as well. They wouldn't even let me sleep in the garden, no, you know, no money, no sleep. So there are the SS barracks. The guy I filmed, um, Andre Gainsbizel, but YouTube took it off. Probably the Nazi Odessa organization had probably uh, interfered somehow because I put his name in it. And uh, so it's right on the other side, this weird building here. You know, the Catholic Church, was so deep in it, in the red line. It's just opposite it. Yeah, they walk around here smiling and you know, no dialogue at all. It's all a trap. Even in Poland, they're so rich now, they let all the apples rot. Look at it. They just let it rot all over. That too. That's Auschwitz there. So here's the lake of Auschwitz. Auschwitz. It's not very far. It's an extra trade. I've been walking around uh, along the uh, the railway, partly when the when the road stopped because of the lake here. Uh, I really didn't feel safe here. Like I was seeing all those cops today there, and after being arrested by the uh, by the Auschwitz police, so I'd rather take the long way in the safe side, you know. Okay, well, here's a bridge, see what I can get. Just exfiltrating. Oh, my socks are wet. I have to put on my wet socks. My Everything is wet. Well. So I'm about, I don't know, about 30 kilometers maybe away from Auschwitz. Hitchhiking doesn't work here. Nobody takes me. So, well, I found a nice place here. So I was walking there on the way, hitchhiking, nobody took me. And uh, it's not, it's, it's difficult to hitchhike in Poland. So I found this very nice little forest here. So I'll put my tent here. I made a mistake though. 
as I was so tired, I took the, you know, the plastic cover. It was all sock, all rainy and all wet, you know, of my backpacks inside. So it all sucked it all up, you know, in the night. I, I should have left it like here in the opening with my shoes <laughs> and my socks. <laughs> so, well, let's see where it gets me today. At least I'm far away from the uh, the Auschwitz prosecution, you know, the Auschwitz police. Wow, man. Well, anyway, Poland is the land of pogroms, you know. <laughs> yeah, well, because of nothing. So I made it to a petrol station here. This is the Polish police. The same ones who arrested me. Well, I mean the same company. So they have octagon as well. Octagon. Just like the Auschwitz police, you know. So it's templates. It's, it's always octagon, you know. Why do you think they do this, you know? Just like it's, it's a uh, coincidence or what? So yesterday I, I hitchhiked from Poland through Czech Republic, Slovakia, and here in Austria. This is Linz. It's quite a big town behind it there. <laughs> and it's the first time in a while I see some clear skies and some sunshine. It's a bit chilly though. Because um, when I woke up in Poland, I came in the night with that German guy hitchhiking, Georg. I, uh, there was a big, a, a heavy fog all over, the, all over the place. And then the moment there was the, uh, there was the day after, not the next day, but the day after. I went into, I, I sneaked into uh, Auschwitz, uh, cross, uh, skipping the, um, jumping the fence two times, you know, like uh, escaping Auschwitz, uh, the inverse side, the inverse, inverse way. Uh, heavy rain started. The very moment I got in there, it started to rain. And it didn't stop for days and days and days. And uh, it got real cold. So, this is Austria, sunny. The only thing, you know, the, the weather I saw in Poland was a, a heavy fog, heavy rains. So actually, I wanted to sleep in the forest, you know, I like forest, but in the night I saw all these logs living, lying there. It's all over, you know, all logs. Uh, there, big one, even bigger ones, you know, like there. So I thought, well, you know, maybe it's not a good idea after all, you know, to sleep there. Uh, I don't know what the state of the trees are, you know, but all the, but uh, imagine waking up and hear yourself shouting timber, you know. <laughs> So that's uh, Linz. Oh, there it says Linz. So there's my motorway. I'm going to hitchhike there. The petrol station, I have to go to the other side, there's a tunnel. Donald's all over. Okay. So I'm going that way. So visiting Auschwitz was quite a disaster. I didn't even make it inside. <laughs> but at least I can, you know, I've done it so I can forget it. You know. Uh, I mean, forget the idea of going there. Uh. 
It's, it, it was really it was a circus there. It's like it was it was like prostituting the Holocaust and um, with those security clowns being the uh, being the pimps. You know, it's all about money, business. You know, no serious people laughing, young people making selfies, and, and you know, there's no time to grieve. You know, you would like to meet other people, serious people, to grieve. You know, and. Well, there isn't, you know, just hordes of tourists, and they're not serious, you know. Of course, they're kids, you know, kids want to make fun, it's normal, they, they, they shouldn't force them in there. That's what, what, that's what Auschwitz is about, you know, people getting forced into Auschwitz. In those days, they got forced, you know, like being killed there, and now they get forced, you know, to, with a school to see it, you know, otherwise they get punished, or... Uh, it's wrong, it's not good. They should have called it the Black Block, actually. Yeah. Oh, it's back in Austria. 7.1. Ah, that's good for breakfast. Good. Let's save myself. You know, about Auschwitz, um, I've got the right to mourn there as well. And I did a, a much longer trip than somebody coming from New York, you know, or from South America or from Israel. I did a pilgrimage for, you know, two weeks, you know, hitchhiking, sleeping outside because I don't have any money. So I have a damn right to go mourning there as well because I also lost my grandfather due to the Nazis in 1942. He fought the Nazis in the British Army, so I have a right too. I have a, I have more right than all the Huns walking there around again, you know, stealing the show there, still running the show with all, you know, in Auschwitz in 2014. So the whole world is upside down with all those security clowns all over, pimping Auschwitz, you know. The whole thing is, uh, the whole world has been turned into a security. I mean, this is what the Nazis wanted anyway. You know, decent people don't get in there. And all the clowns with their selfies and laughter, they all get in there, you know. This is what the Nazis wanted, you know, and this is what they got. Yeah. So I went to two weeks hitchhiking, sleeping in the cold, getting wet, you know, for nothing. Not for nothing, but they didn't let me in. So, I'll just stick here with my beer, my 7.1% beer. And here's, of course, my good old travel companion, which got me through. Now, I did two, two weeks of hardcore hitchhiking to Auschwitz with no money. Sleeping rough, I hitchhiked the whole damn way. Uh, and uh, didn't even get in. You know? uh, my father never saw his father. You know, he was too young. He missed his father his whole life because of the Nazis. Because his father fought the Nazis, you know, during the Second World War and he died in 1942. So can't I go there and mourn inside, you know? Those security clowns, they looked in my bag, they saw everything. I mean, you know, what can I do, you know? Neo-Nazis, they come in the night anyway. And then they presume, they even presume that if I was a Nazi, you know, I should have smacked him, you know? You can't, you know? They run the show, you know? They, they, they pull the strings, you know? And afterwards, they've probably been talking as they got my my Swiss Schengen ID. They've probably been talking to the Swissies, you know, probably telling them a bunch of lies, you know, as the Swissy always lie. They always lie, you know. So <laughs> this is Auschwitz, you know. <laughs> I would have filmed some more there, but, you know, the weather was so hard, the conditions were rough, you know. 
I felt like persecuted there, you know. So it was raining, I had to put up the umbrella. Uh, it's just not to have the, you know. Well, I'm sorry. So I'm just, you know. Just sip my beer here instead. You know. The world is for the victors, isn't it? Yeah. The Nazis, uh, you know, they won the war. Oh yeah, look at it, you know. You know, I had a rough two weeks, you know, and just finishing my beers here, recollecting my my thoughts and experiences. Finally, sitting in the sun, you know, but after having my feet wet, you know, for days and days. And uh, what a shame it is, you know. You saw in the in the video how these the camp police they're having octagon badges, you know. Uh, that's Templar stuff. I've shown you this in Octagon, the Empire of Darkness, in my video here. And Auschwitz made in Switzerland, how the Swiss Templars, how they finance Auschwitz and how they organize the whole thing. So Auschwitz was financed and organized by the Templars. And now these Templar dudes, you know, they walk around with the Templar badges inside Auschwitz, telling me or asking me if I am a Nazi. You know, I definitely, you know, I, I, I could do them, I could do them for it, you know. It's, it's, and they know what they're doing. They are initiated, I tell you. Now they, they, you know, they're, they're making a living out of it, you know. Out of the death they brought. So Auschwitz was financed by the Templars, who always built their Templars' castles and temples, you know, in an octagonal form. Just as Hitler's uh, eagle's nest. And now they walk around with this octagon badge inside Auschwitz, you know. And hypocritically asking me if I am a Nazi, you know. The bastards, I tell you. What a bunch of bastards. How, how humiliating that was for me. Standing there, calling the cops, it was raining, I felt miserable and tired, you know. I'm being chased away there and then... You know, with, with, with all death around, you know, and... Well... Ah, <sighs> cut. So after my two strong beers, you know, I've got everything here. This is where I slept, on the hill somewhere there. There's a supermarket where I got my beer. I can't really see it. There's the motorway where I go hitchhiking. But I was hungry after those two beers. So this is a Turkish, you know. The last time I was here last week, I did this one here. So I, now I did the Turkish kebab, you know. So I some customers here but they're all like you know like this guy from Hungary here they're like this you know they know, don't know it from home and then I asked the Turkish guy he said my chief is not there you know I asked a lot of people and with my gear you know I look like somebody's with my beard and all that I look like somebody coming back from Syria from the from the jihad you know so I, I told them some things I, you know, I learned when I was in uh, Afghanistan. <laughs> like, uh, so when he said, my boss is not here. You know, I said like shaitan, you know, I mean devil, sa satan. And then I said, ashadu an la ilaha illallah, ashadu an la muhammad rasulullah. And then I said, uh, La ilaha illa lava da hula mulku. Uh, well, I don't remember it now after those two beers. But anyway, it works, you know. All of a sudden, he came with the kebab, you know. <laughs> yeah, this is, this is how I hitchhiked my way. <laughs> this is how I hitchhiked my way around, you know. Just, you know, 
do the lingo in all in all lingos, you know, you know what to say, yeah. So that's why I'm going now, go some hitchhiking. Go back to Octagon. <laughs> Hello. There we go, eh? Hey? Surviving, eh? Hey? But he was nice. So I told him Teshe Kula. Teshe Kula Rakadesh uh, Gula Gula. I mean, uh, thank you, uh, brother. Gula Gula means bye bye. I really do thank him. It was a real nice kebab. It was all free. And this is the way to travel without any money, you know? Bye bye. Cut. So that was my kebab place, you know. Thank you, brother. This is, and there's my petrol station. I have to go to the other way, to the other side. And uh, I could write a book, you know, how to kebab your way through Europe. <laughs> okay. Another castle. Austria is full of castles of the Austrian Hungarian Empire. It was huge. There's the sunny aeroglyph in another way. Well, they know what they're doing. They are masters. They are everywhere. They look down upon us. You know, they don't talk with us. They don't marry with us. They only marry, have children among each other. And there are no civil marriages, you know. They just pretend that it is a civil, a civil marriage, but it isn't. They're everywhere. They are the ones who are everywhere. So, it's here in Austria. Trying to get further. Oh, here it says, it says, Schloss Trautenfels. Fels, it means a rock. Trauten, I think it's a fish. It's probably a river next to it. So that, that it's, it's the rock, you know. Yeah. They're the ones, all right. There's another castle. It's full of castles here. Schloss Pichlan. And I just passed that place where they've been, you know, where they said the Nazi gold went in in. Uh, the Toplitz uh, Lake, or the Toplitz. But uh, well, I didn't want to get out, you know. My petrol station and the motorway. Well, there's not much going on there. And uh, the river camping out. A nice lawn here. <coughs> in Austria. Mm, on the way back to Switzerland.